Welcome to the Workplace Wellbeing Essential Series. I'm Mari Ryan. I'm the CEO and founder of Advancing Wellness. And it's my pleasure to welcome you today to this expert interview where we explore topics that impact employee well-being. My guest today is Ravi Hutti Singh. Ravi is an international keynote speaker and culture catalyst. He empowers businesses and educational institutions and millions of people worldwide to build collaborative relationships by transcending culture and generational divides. In addition to being an author, a speaker, he is also a rock star, a diplomat, and an aviator. And yes, that's a literal rock star. In 2018, Ravi launched Ravi Unite Schools, Unites Schools, a growing network of over 100 schools worldwide whose students participate in real-time audio-video interactions with peers across the globe. Ravi began serving as a cultural diplomat for the United, St the United States Department of State in 2015, giving speeches and keynotes on entrepreneurship and youth leadership in Russia. In 2016, he went to Indonesia and created a songwriting and entre entrepreneurship program that bridged severe cultural and religious divides. And in 2017, Ravi created similar programs in Iraq and Lebanon. Next year in 2020, Ravi will launch a similar program in Chile, which is where he's joining us from today. Ravi is the first American born member of India's first family, Nehru and Gandhi families, which created and governed the world's largest de democracy for over 40 years. Ravi, I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. It's great to be here. As we explore topics with dimensions of culture and diversity in the workplace, we're hearing so much more about this today. And no place is this more evidence than with the generational diversity that we are now experiencing in the workplace. It makes me wonder if, it's, if there are really meaningful differences among the generations in the workplaces and if that really exists. So Ravi, help us understand, what does it really mean to have five generations in the workplace? Right, well, you know, to give you sort of my lens on how I approach the generations, I mean, one of the things I get to do in my life is travel. And I spend anywhere from 200 to 250 days a year traveling, and it's global. And I spend a lot of time you know, with my background. Um, uh, growing up, I was the youngest in my family, my two older brothers, um, were baby boomers. I'm a Generation X. And I grew up around many of their friends, and I started working earlier, and I was always the youngest person in the environments uh, in which I hung out with as I grew up during a teenager. So I really got that sense of being baby boomers in their own environment. And then, um, as you alluded to in the introduction, in 1997, I was the guitar player of the band Handsome, which was one of the first millennial bands on the planet. So now here I was, previously in a baby boomer environment, completely thrown into a millennial environment. And me as the Gen X, I'm sort of the natural pivot point between these two larger generations. Gen X is the smaller generation in between. And as a result, we as a generation have always either leaned towards the baby boomers or leaned towards the millennials. And I found myself doing all of that. These are essentially, we say five generations in the workforce, and that's probably technically but in reality, most of the time, we're dealing with these three generations, the baby boomers, Gen X, and millennials. Millennials, the largest generation on the planet now, and millennials are really the largest stakeholders on the planet now. On the planet now. I said on the planets now. That is the future. I mean, the millennials may actually see that come to reality, but on the planet now. And uh, so this, this comes to your question of are there really – fundamental differences. Um, and what I've always seen, because I have somewhat of a luxury that many people don't, which is that I've worked with all the generations, but in their own environments, mm. as opposed to trying to pull the generations into a singular environment, which is what many businesses have to do. And the reality is that starting with the basic understanding that we are all human beings, first and foremost, we all have so much more in common than we do have differences. 
but we focus on our differences rather than our commonalities. Right. Do we have a lot of differences? Yes, we have differences in terms of the environments in which we grew up, in terms of the technology that we use, in terms of the way that we express ourselves. But we have differences in, in some of the most important things, like our true values. No, we don't. Those are some of the consistencies that we see from generation to generation. But because certain generations, like the millennial generations, are going to live longer lifespans than previous generations, their whole overall outlook on life is elongated. You know, the, the director of the lab on aging for Harvard Medical School said the first person to live to 150 has already been born. So imagine how one approaches life if you are going to basically have 100 years of working years in your, in your lifetime, 100 years of productivity, you will approach it at a different pace. But what's so interesting when you look at the millennial generation and then Gen Z who's going to follow them is because of technology, while the overall pace is slower, the micro pace is much faster. The evolution within the generation, within the life, moving at a faster rate. So as long as we understand those two realities and those two juxtapositions, we can then start to better understand why millennials are going to take a longer time to figure out what they want to do for the course of their life, why they're going to make more pivots. Pivots is something I talk a lot about. It's the title of the book that I'm writing right now. Uh, because there is, with 100 years of productivity and 150 year lifespan, you're going to have many more jobs. You're going to work in more industries, but probably have more marriages and, you know, everything. It's on a, on, a, on a different time scale. But the value systems ultimately remain the same. Social interest, whether it's through technology or whether it's around the water cooler, it's still about social interaction. And the other thing to understand about generations and what I've seen in my own research and a lot of my research, uh, unlike many generational speakers, a lot of it's anecdotal because I do travel around and work with, with these generations, um, is that you realize it's just a pendulum swing. And what's what's happening is is that the millennials are pulling the pendulum very far in one direction, that the baby boomers had it in the other direction, now Gen Z is going to start to pull that back a little bit more. And what that means is the telephone may be gone forever as a form of voice communication. But what is going to come back is face-to-face -face communication. We're already seeing that in the younger generation. And look at what we're doing now. We have technology here that allows us have a more personal face-to-face -face interaction with people all around the world. So we're also looking at a much more global generation. But it does come down to this, which gives me a lot of hope for the future. It, it does come down to something that's always been true throughout humanity, which is we are social beings. We like to interact. And it's just that the mechanisms and the way that we express ourselves are different. Well, that's really, I'm so glad that you're your comments are rooted in commonalities and values because I think those are just so, so important for us to be able to, you know, bridge these generations and build those relationships. You know, it, it is, and you can look at it as simply as uh, today we're clicking likes on Facebook, on Instagram, and all these social media uh, platforms. But when I was growing up as a Generation Xer, we wore rock band t-shirts and sports team jersey. The idea was the same. How do we find like-minded people? How do we surround ourselves by people that we have something in common with and common interests? It's human nature. It's all about finding our tribe. Yeah, and so, yeah, it's our community, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I'm curious from your perspective, you know, we talk a lot about millennials and certainly they have been probably the most written about generation. And I'm curious from your perspective, if you really think that they are very different? You know, are their needs or their interests very different? And are they harder to understand? No, not really. You know, I think that the biggest difference between the generations is not so much uh, when they grew up, it's that we're, at all, we're at different ages. So the, it's really age differences more than generational mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. I think in many cases, the baby boomers have simply forgotten what they were like when, when they were what <laughs> millennia you know kids today every generation has said it it's not a new phrase kids today right right so i think that that's really the case it's not that they're so different but it's that in many ways society and the tools we have are different going back to what i originally said technology artificial intelligence 
uh, information is moving at a much faster pace and therefore changing much more rapidly. It's changed our attention spans. It's changed the millennials' willingness to make investments, whether it's investments in a job, investments in the stock market, investments in marriages and relationships, because things are changing at a much faster pace and they're going to live a lot longer life. So that's what makes them really different. But what makes them really the same is that they want, it's, it comes back down to the values. It really comes down to the fact that that at the end of the day, they want to make a difference. At the end of the day, they want to have time to enjoy their families. They want to have time to enjoy life. And many of the things that we criticize them for are the things that we all want. <laughs> it's just that certain generations didn't grow up, you know, in prior times, we had um, a work-life balance, right? That was what older generations were always trying to find, a work-life balance. The younger generations try to find work-life integration. It's not balance, it's integration. Integration. Life's yeah, that's great. I'm curious um, if you can share with us a little bit about what can employers do to help bridge the generations in the workplace and to help their workforce make those meaningful connections that you were referring to? Yeah, and this is, of course, one of the hardest challenges that every employer faces today, mm -hmm. especially if they have multiple generations working. Uh, in the same physical environment. Um, so you have to look at those common themes again, that creating that sense of, of community, creating open workspaces. I believe that many people of uh, baby boomer generations or even older, my father's generation, had great values to their private workspace and their, their closed corner office, you know, and, and that type of structure. And there are a lot of people currently still in, in the work environment that feel they have earned that and that want that corner office, and that want that privacy. This is the transition because, transition because the younger generations want the more community environment. They want what we're seeing popping up in common workspaces, uh, and that, that type of um, open environment. So environment's really important, and if we want to create uh, more cross-collaborative, cross-cultural collaborative opportunities, and by cultural, I don't just mean diversity in the sense of where we all come from, our races, or our ethnic backgrounds, or our religions, but generations are nothing more than cultural differences. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to create cross-cultural collaboration, we have to create environments in which those opportunities exist. Environments that have open workspaces, environments that have private conference rooms, places where people can get away to make a, a quick private phone call, but at the same time, a place where they can be surrounded and work uh, in a Starbucks environment. You know, there's a reason why there are a lot of people that like to go to uh, common workspaces and, and coffee houses. If we can create those environments and that kind of culture, it all comes down to culture, which is why I refer to myself as a culture catalyst. How do we create those cultures uh, in certain work environments? Well, it's so interesting the way that you've referred to this is around connections and community, because those are two elements that we refer to in the model of well-being uh, mm. that we use with employer groups, because those connections make people feel that they belong in the workplace, and that's how they then feel that they really, you know, want to be there and can contribute in a meaningful way. Absolutely, and I think it's very also, it's, it's also very important to understand that um, people's personal time is really important. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, uh, to sort of take this at a more futurist and philosophical look, we are entering an age of globalization and artificial intelligence. PricewaterhouseCoopers tells us 40% of jobs are going to be outsourced to automate, uh, are going to be automated within the next 10 years. Um, you know, I believe we're entering a phase where, where as a society, we're no longer going to be defined by what we do. We've always been defined by what we do. That's been the question. So what do you do? I think that's going to shift because our, our, our identities are going to be formed more around what difference are we making in the world? What are our values? Who are we? So if our workplaces understand that uh, people aren't necessarily defined by the work that they do, but they want to bring their own personality, their own work habits uh, into the workplace, this is a very positive uh, trend, I think. Um, what remains important is that the work gets done. How the work gets done is maybe less important. All right. But as long um, as the work is being done, 
uh, I think employers should be very um, welcoming of people's individual styles of work because that that should that should lift all boats if everybody's being productive you know really profound words i love it thanks so much for sharing that diversity has been such a big topic of late in the workplace and i'm curious how do you think the different generations view diversity is there really any difference yeah you know it's interesting when you when you look um at some at, at the basic generations and you look at where they lie on political issues and social justice issues mm -hmm. um you know it, it, there is there are differences um let me just think of some rattle some off the top of my head you know i mean the the when it comes to immigration for example i mean you look at the you look at the the polls that are taken on this the subject majority of baby boomers don't think it's good for the country majority of millennials think it is mm -hmm. Um, you know, when you look at things like the border wall, you know, there is a just, regardless of which side you sit on the issue, when you look at the generations, you can see the majority of the boomers are in favor of the border wall, the majority of millennials are not. So there are differences um, when it comes to racial differences. You know, we have to remember that the boomers grew up at a time of segregation. The millennials grew up at a time of Obama. You know, they're, they're not even impressed that we had an African-American president. They think it's normal. It's a different lens in which in which they're looking at these very important issues. So, um, when it comes to diversity in the workplace, millennials are looking for it. They want they are global, and they want that global uh, environment it feels to them, and it it makes them also feel good about their own values. And if one subscribes to that and and has grown up in an environment that is becoming more diverse, and with technology we have more access to globe and um, our communities everywhere are becoming more diverse that's our comfort zone and diversity is very important and the, what I think is a, what's great about the millennial generation is that they are the most multicultural open-minded generation we've ever seen well it's wonderful to be able to have an environment in the workplace where we can appreciate all of the differences and similarities that people bring as individuals in into that workspace and you know it's really to think about just it. hit it the, to appreciate the similarities and differences, differences. and you mentioned in, in the introduction that i founded this network ravi united schools this is the whole purpose of ravi united schools and what i do is i put on 45 minute interactions between student groups in chile for example later this week uh and and a group in the united states in two weeks i'll be in india i'm going to be doing one from india uh, with, the, with the United States. And the whole point is to create peer-to-peer -peer interactions because we all learn best from our peers, especially the younger generations. Um, and what happens is if you create an environment where they start to bond naturally mm -hmm. and recognize, my gosh, we're reading the same books. We're reading the, I didn't know some kid in, in the village in India could break dance just the same way that we do here or listens to Akon or you know, <laughs> watching uh, the same movie. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and so we wanna create harmony in our businesses, we wanna create harmony in our more microcosm environments, which is very important. Creating those opportunities for, for people that seem to be different to recognize how much they have in common will only enhance their empathy and desire to not only understand each other's differences, but to genuinely appreciate each other. If our audience wants to learn more about you and the fabulous work that you're doing, Ravi, where can they find you? They can find me at my website, raviunites.com, and they can also reach me through the website and answer every email person. Fabulous. Thank you so much for the important work that you're doing, creating connections and building communities worldwide. Thanks, Ravi. Thanks, Mara. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.